For today's EMN5, I want to talk about dental injuries. So you have a patient who comes in, they had some trauma to the face, and you look in their mouth and you see this, a fractured tooth. Well, first let's talk about how to identify that tooth and describe it well to the dentist for their follow-up. There's this numbering system, which I think is a little difficult to remember. I think this works a lot better. So let's try to identify those on this mouth. So here you have your central incisor. Right here, that's the lateral incisor. Just next to that, this is the pointy one. It's a little longer. Yes, that's your canine. Next, you have the two premolars. So you have your first premolar and second premolar. And after that, you have your three molars. So then next, the only descriptor to add to that is probably the maxillary versus mandibular. One other thing you can do when you're kind of describing the front versus the back of the tooth, if the injury is different, this is actually called the facial front of the tooth, and the more posterior part of the tooth is called the oral side of the tooth. And it's tricky for us because occasionally we have mouths that look like this, probably more often than not, unfortunately, and it's a little hard to tell which tooth is which, but we can try to estimate by shape and the location of the tooth. So the most commonly injured or fractured teeth are the maxillary central incisors, about 70 to 80%. Now let's talk about the anatomy of the tooth itself. The crown has three layers that we think about when we're talking about a dental fracture. This uh, external hard part, it's not permeable, that's called the enamel. Next we have the dentin. This is more of a cushion, it is permeable to bacteria. And lastly we have the pulp which is the neurovascular part. This is going to be very uh, red or pink if you're looking at a tooth that has a fracture through the pulp. So anytime you have a patient come in with a dental fracture, facial trauma, there's a couple of things to make sure and think about. What if you happen to see this? That's concerning for a mandibular fracture. Make sure you get a Panorex. What happens if the patient's coughing a lot? Yeah, you need to get a chest x-ray because they might have actually aspirated a piece of that tooth. Here's a piece of tooth in the right bronchus. Okay, so when we're talking about a dental fracture, there's three classifications. It basically has to do with how deep that fracture line goes. So Ellis 1, this is the least serious. This just hits the enamel. You can see that picture there. It's usually not that painful. And actually your main treatment is just going to be to file it down. You can actually use an emery board just like you'd use for fingernails. And the idea is you're trying to get rid of these sharp edges here so that you don't end up with a tongue or a lip lack from the sharp edges of the tooth. There's a very low complication rate with Ellis 1 fractures, zero to three percent of the complications, um, which generally for any of these fractures are pulp infection or pulp necrosis or possibly some discoloration of the tooth. Just have them felt with the dentist as needed. Ellis 2 fracture, this goes through both the enamel and the dentin. And so here you see the white enamel on the outside, that's the hard layer. And then just under that, you see peeking through, here's this yellow, that layer is the dentin. So you know that this is an Ellis 2. This tends to be more sensitive to both um, temperature, percussion, possibly cold air. And this carries a complication rate a little higher, one to 7%. And that's because the dentin is porous, so it lets that fat bacteria get into the pulp, which is where it can cause problems. The treatment for this is doing calcium hydroxide paste, and then once you've done that, do a soft diet. So the calcium hydroxide paste, it comes in two parts. You have to mix them together, kind of like epoxy. So you mix them up and basically put a little wad of it on top covering the fracture, and that protects it against infection. Now when you're placing it, the tooth has to be absolutely dry. If it's wet at all or bleeding a little bit, it's not going to stick. So make sure that the tooth is absolutely dry. One little trick for doing this is have the patient bite down on some gauze to dry it off. You can also use a little bit of epinephrine soaked in that gauze if the tooth is bleeding a little bit, and that will help stop the bleeding. So you've put the calcium hydroxide paste on, make sure they do a soft diet, and then you need these patients to follow up with the dentist, and it has to be fairly rapidly. Generally in adults, you need them to follow up within 24 to 48 hours for definitive management in order to prevent these complications. The pediatric population, their tooth has a higher ratio of the pulp, so they actually need to follow up sooner. Okay, lastly is the LS3, meaning it goes through all the way down to the pulp. It can be very painful, and the complication rate is much higher. 10 to 30% of these patients will go on to have necrosis, so this is pretty serious considered a dental emergency. Let's identify our layers again. There's the white enamel, then underneath that we have the yellow, which is the dentin layer, and then the red underneath, that's the pulp. So that's what we're looking for. If you see red, pink, a little bit of bleeding, you know that you're LS3 all the way down to the pulp. And so this follow-up has to be within 24 hours. Otherwise, it's treated just the same as an LS2. You need to do the calcium hydroxide paste. The only difference in diet is you should do a liquid diet for these patients and again, have them follow up within 24 hours. Now these can be very painful. So in addition to maybe some lidocaine soaked gauze, you could think about doing a dental block. Now with such a high risk of infection with this pulp exposed, do we want to do antibiotics for these patients? The answer is yes. The oral cavity is 
filled with bacteria that can cause infections, generally we recommend doing penicillin or clindamycin to cover the oral anaerobes and make sure your patient gets a tetanus shot if they need to. So three to remember for dental fractures, you have three classifications. LS1 is just the enamel. Just use an emery board to file off the edge. LS2 and 3 are a little bit more serious. You need to have them follow up with dentists and you need to put the calcium hydroxide on there. LS2 means that it went down to the dentin and LS3 means you should see that little red dot or even some bleeding, meaning it went all the way down to the pulp. Make sure when you are putting the calcium hydroxide on there that you dry the tooth all the way first and don't forget your antibiotics and tetanus. Thanks again for joining us on EM in 5.